Um, for anybody who has not um, been here before or just needs a refresher, um, I'm Ellen Mejia Hooper. I'm the Director of Facilities, Planning and Construction. Um, and we have several other uh, folks from the facilities staff and administration tonight to help facilitate the meeting. Um, but we are looking forward to uh, a great discussion this evening. So the goal for tonight, again, is setting that 15 or less criteria. So right now we're sitting at 23. We need to get down to 15 or less, and we need to discuss metrics for the um, some of the criteria that are new. Uh, just make sure we totally understand what the criteria that we're putting on the um, list is meant to, to um, measure. So we'll quickly re review the role of the committee and the norms, then we'll move straight into the discussion of removing our cri consolidating criteria. And we will end uh, with public comment. If we have any public comment at the end, um, there will be an opportunity to, to do that. The role of the committee is updating the criteria for project sequencing and funding. Uh, we are not here to talk about individual um, schools in particular, um, but really trying to judge what, what items that we would like um, to be able to compare one program and school to another. Um, and the important part is here, these things are not things that we necessarily are going to rebuild or not rebuild as far as elements of a building. So desirable things in a design isn't necessarily what we want to do for a criteria. Um, can you please confirm you are a committee member? So sorry to interrupt. I, I just have an attendee. I, I wanted to see if uh, this is one of our committee members. Are they able to unmute? No. All right, thank you, James. It's great to have you. Um, and there will be an opportunity at the end for public comment. Um, but we are happy to have you here to listen to the process. Um, so it's important in the design to remember that these criteria are really trying to figure out which schools need to be rebuilt first versus later instead of things that we are desired to have in the rebuild. Um, just make sure we're clear on that. And then um, on the right, there's the list of who's represented on the committee. Establishing the norms, we've, this is the same slide we've looked at every time. Remember that uh, we wanna make sure that we get around to everybody's first comment before we go on to a second one. So try to share the space, be respectful. Um, remember that all views are important um, and we're trying to have an equitable and balanced um, conversation here and um, be t tough on the issues, not on each other. Um, we are moving into the holiday season, so let's have a little holiday spirit. Um, this has been great so far, so I'm sure there's not going to be a problem. Um, public comments, it's not a Brown Act meeting. Uh, this is just a side committee of the district. Um, we will set aside some time at the end for public comment. Each commenter will have two minutes. Um, I don't think we'll have to go or less because so far we have not had more than a couple people looking for public comment. So what are we doing tonight? Tonight is about narrowing down to that 15. Um, and so the process to get us from where we are to where we want to be is we, any committee member will be able to propose a change. Um, so either eliminating one, combining one, uh, combining several criteria together, whatever that change wants to be, any committee member can propose something. That proposal will be open up for discussion. And once the discussion is complete, we will have a uh, vote up or down on whether we want to make the change or not. If the vote has enough votes, um, more than 50%, then we will make the change. If it does not, we will move on to the next proposal. We need to discuss one proposal at a time though. So we've got to be careful not to wander off while we're trying to deal with um, 
one discussion versus another. Um, we can kind of uh, add to things if we need to uh, at the board meeting. I believe they call them friendly amendments. We can kind of look at doing that if necessary, but we wanna make sure we stay on one topic at a time before we move on to another one. And Ellen, if I could add, just add, yeah. you know, one of the goals, as Ellen has stated, is to try to get this down to, you know, 15 items. Um, but as you look at them and consider what are the most important or how we want to prioritize them, I shouldn't say prioritize them because they're not really prioritizing them. As we look at, at the items on the list and how we try to bring that number down, if there's an effort or a way to consolidate some of these items that actually really makes sense, that's one of the um, goals we'd like to strive for tonight. So it's not necessarily eliminating all of them, but it is if they uh, feel like they want, you know, and look like they should fit together with another item or could be combined with an item, we can certainly consider that. So those are some of the things we'd like to be able to discuss as we go through these tonight. So. Right, and right to that end, one of the things that we took upon ourselves to do is to give some level of structure to this list. Um, and so we've kind of grouped things together and things that we saw were, were kind of overlapping components or at least had similar pieces. Um, some of them were difficult because they kind of stretched across several categories. Um, but this was really just a, a mechanism to kind of let the committee see these <coughs> in a different format. But these are the ones that have held through the first round of reduction. Um, we are maintaining the yellow highlight for those who, that were part of the original 2016 criteria. Um, so those that are shown in, in white are, are ones that were added either by the community or the committee. Um, so this is this is the core of it right and so i'm going to open it up to the committee now to see if anybody has um the first proposed change that we could discuss and i see um odessa has her hand raised yes i have um just sort of a general question as we're going through the criteria um i understand that uh as a norm uh we the con the committee members have been instructed or asked not to um, debate the merits of particular schools, but um, I wonder if it's acceptable or suitable to bring up specifics that relate to um, specific schools or sites that we're associated with. So for full disclosure, my son goes to the West County Mandarin School, and during these um, committee meetings, it's been referenced uh, the Sarah site has been referenced as the site for that school, which is no longer going to be the case going forward. Um, and we will be at a temporary site. I'm just wondering how, uh, how the committee members are expected to operate in spaces where there are some changing factors um, that could either uh, inadvertently handicap um, the school and the site that, um, the, the funds that are allocated for the sites or even advantage certain sites based on um, the way the criteria is eventually flushed out. So in the bond language, West County Mandarin and the Sarah site are linked together. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the background of where we are. Um, there is going to, because it's a truly unique situation, there is going to have to be some consideration about um, how we can address the West County Mandarin site um, with the criteria. But it's very difficult to do that before we know which criteria is, is going to move forward. Um, but there is going to have to be some level of um, understanding about how best to address that particular program and it is a unique um, component because no one else is is in that same position um, and i know it's difficult to separate yourself from the the i mean all of you have a vested interest right all of you are um, affected one way or another by these schools and i have a a total understanding that we have 19 schools that have serious needs like we realize that um, if you were able to tour all the schools and um, go into every room like i was able to do 
um, you would know that we have quite a few schools that all need help and every parent, every community member that is associated with a student has a um, emotional connection as well as a practical connection to you know, which schools get rebuilt and how quickly they happen. The, the thing that we are trying to do though is to look at this from a broader picture and really say what is truly important and knowing that all of these have needs and deserve to be rebuilt and need to be rebuilt, um, what are we really going to say this is this is the line that we set because these are truly the things that are most important to the district to decide how we are going to rebuild it. Um, and I know it's difficult when you want uh, or you're thinking about your individual school and wanting to um, make sure you're well representing that community. Um, but that's the best advice I can give to it. Um, if I could just clarify. Um, I want to make sure that it's understood that I take this uh, commitment to the committee very seriously and that um, my engagement throughout has not been in a biased way or, you know, committed um, solely to the outcome of, of West County Mandarin, but more broadly to the process is I think it's really important to look at this seriously and how it impacts whether bond dollars are approved uh, in future cases by the, the community. Um, but I just want to make sure that um, that you know every site is taken into equal consideration and that we are devel developing a set of metrics that can be equitable across the board. Um, so that is, is, is really the basis for my question. Um, and also uh, to the second part, um, is it acceptable for committee members to cite um, practical cases of, of how um, some of these metrics could be applied to the schools that are on the list, maybe not necessarily citing a specific site, but bringing up questions that could be relevant based on our experience and what we see with these schools. I mean, I think that's happened already. We've slipped into individual school sites that have been mentioned for particular components of this one way or another, or just as a practical example, so people can reference something that's real. Um, and I think that's okay. The, the intent is not to have, um, you know, and, and I don't think that like knowing this group, like we make these norms before we know the group, right? And so you never know how it's going to work out and who's going to show up. Um, but, you know, the, the idea is to protect the committee from listening to 20 minutes of why, you know, school X, Y, and Z is the, in the most dire strait and absolutely is the one that needs to get rebuilt, right? Um, so I think that's what we're trying to buffer against um, the casual mentioning of, you know, the applicability of it to one school site or another, just as a concrete example of what we mean by the physical space is, you know, we haven't mentioned that throughout this process as being a problem, and I don't foresee that being a problem tonight either. Um, if it does get to the point where, you know, we're spending a lot of time going back and forth about whether one, you know, school is, is more deserving than another, then we'll, you know, as a moderator, I'll have to put a stop to it, but um, I don't foresee it being a problem. Thank you. Okay. So um, with that, do we have, um, and one, one more thing just to clarify just before we get going is, you know, this committee is recommending something to the board. So the way that these get applied to these different school sites, um, especially with, because we also have Cameron, which is a unique site. We have Eldorado, that's a unique site. So there are unique programs out there. And so we will have to do some level of um, application of these criteria to programs that are not like our standard K through 12 um, traditional uh, neighborhood schools. So um, all of this will come forward to the board as a recommendation and that application is a component of it that um, that the board will, will have the final say on. So. Anyways, um, does anybody have a recommendation of a consolidation or a removal or something along those lines? 
Ellen, my hand has been up for about 10 minutes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Your hand was behind the chat. Go ahead. Okay. I've got four items just to, to start with. Well, uh, let's start with one at a time, though, because we don't want to get, unless it's like four items to consolidate together. No, they're not. But I, I just don't want us to end the meeting and say, well, damn, Don didn't say much. <laughs> oh, you worried about that one, Don. <laughs> All right. Let, let's, let's start off with combining uh, L and S. Now, both, have to, both have to do with capacity. Uh, L is over or nearing capacity. Okay, that's it. Make it real, even smaller so I can't read it. <laughs> and, well, I'm uh, working on it. I'm working on it. And, and, and S as enrollment projections versus capacity of the site. Now, enrollment projections versus capacity of the site is more important because, <laughs> uh, as an example, El Cerrito, you've got, what, uh, several thousand, or a thousand new units being built on the BART stations. Right, right mm -hmm. now, uh, and I bet you one or two of those residents are going to have kids. Yeah, are we ready for that? Uh, but uh, overing, over or nearing capacity, uh, if the the board and the district need to redraw the lines about where the families uh, of these schools are, I mean, that can address that. But both of them have to do with uh, with capacity of the school itself, because I think that you can combine the two of them. From two into one. Okay, so that's been opened up for discussion. Do any of the other committee members have um, have a comment? Makes sense to me. Okay. I believe the major difference of this is that the the L is today's numbers of enrollment where S is projected enrollment, which we do have projected enrollment. Um, the demog we have a demographer that redoes our projections every year. Um, so there are projections to five years out, um, just so that the committee is aware of what the district has as far as data. Yeah, but as I, I'm sorry, as I pointed out, uh, uh, the today's capacity of the school can be adjusted by the board and the district just by redrawing the lines about uh, in, in a, the community itself, where do, your, where do you send your students? If a school gets too full, uh, then you redraw the lines so that those, those students end up going to a, a different school to, to try to balance things out. Uh, but when you talk about projections for uh, yeah, increased po uh, population or decreased uh, over a five year period or a 10 year period, uh, those are things that really can't be adjusted quite as easily by just uh, dragging the, the lines on the map a little bit. But in, in, my, sorry, in my opinion, they, they both deal with the same issue, uh, just a slight little difference on, in them. So Don, can you rephrase putting them both together in one, uh, in one sentence or mix both of them together? You, you want me to, to relabel it? Yeah, Could, couldn't it just be capacity? And then, you know, when you break it down, when we talk about what that means, there's like two points to it or whatever, three I, points. I, I agree with that completely, Danielle. That'd be just the one word capacity. Because uh, that's, that's how it is, like functionality or something is another word down there that we can't see. But that's a huge word. Like, and I feel like all those other categories, little bits lifted, listed. Listed next to that one are also all types of functionality. So, similarly, anyways, so, that's capacity. We should um, we should define though if what what we are trying to um, to achieve with this particular criteria. So, um, understanding that both of these do have to do with capacity and enrollment. Um, what is your proposal done for? for how it would be measured. I am less interested in the capacity today because that is fluid as I am the uh, projected enrollment you know, versus the capacity uh, you know, for the future. I mean, actually the, the, the way that uh, item S is labeled uh, it describes it more accurately, to, in my opinion, uh, than, uh, than anything else. Uh, I, I have a problem with, with just the way L is described as over or nearing capacity, because again, that's, that's fluid. It, it can change 
very rapidly. Uh, and uh, it, I don't I just don't believe it should be a, a, a criteria. I mean, you, you need to consider what it's get, you, you expect it to be for the next few years. But at the same time, uh, we're not going to bring a construction crew out to any site tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be years before uh, we're, we're going to be working on most of these schools. And so whatever the capacity is today, you know, being over or under, may not be applicable by the time that they actually start doing the work. So I'd like to uh, propose a joining of SNL enrollment okay. predictions versus capacity in the site, parentheses, over or nearing capacity as projections um, are analyzed. I'm good with that. Okay, that's a little long for my um, <laughs> thing here, but I, I'm going to figure out if I can do this differently. Um, use projected enrollment versus capacity. You can take the word of, of a site, but capacity, uh, take into consideration over or nearing capacity. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing no, do we think we're ready for a vote? Sure. Okay. Well. okay I'm just um, completing the poll here. There's a poll. There's a poll. Well, it's it's coming. <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't see it on my screen. That's like there's a poll. Yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, trying to. I just made it, but now I need to figure out how to launch it. You gotta use your imagination, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's try this. Um, no, I don't want it. I want number seven. Item one. Allow panelists to vote. I've now figured out it's this little check mark that makes the magic happen. Um, okay, so you should be able to see it now on your screen, right? The voting? You bet. Okay, yes. great. <laughs> so how many committee members do we have in attendance right now? Do you know? You were close to 15. Okay. Okay, we have 12 votes in, and all of them, well, of course I say that, and then two of them vote no. Um, <laughs> we're now at 14. So that's probably all of our committee members or close to. So I will share the results. Um, we have 12 yeses and two noes. So we are going to move that forward. So L and S are gonna be combined. And I will fix the wording later, but this will just help us keep, keep track of it in the meantime. If there's any other clarifications in the wording or what it means, I think we can try to wordsmith that and get back out to the group as well. So it makes more sense. Okay, so I heard originally, Don, that you had four proposals. So number two? It's actually increased now. I, I was being, well, anyway. Uh, yeah, keep in mind on this. I'm looking at the facilities themselves and not what happens inside the facilities. Uh, and I'm very sympathetic to a lot of the issues on here, but we're trying to cut things down. Uh, on item uh, V, the percentage of ESL, foster, and low income. Well, most of our district is low income. And so it, that doesn't really narrow things down 
uh, a lot. Uh, and then the percentage of foster students at each school, again, is very fluid. And it's a very small number for at most of the schools, isn't it? Uh, and even ESL, uh, th that is something that, that the school board needs to address in how they deal with what happens in the classrooms, but not necessarily the buildings themselves. So I would uh, recommend removing this one. Well, do we have a discussion on that? I will, I will uh, disagree with you, Don. Um, I think that um, a lot of our students are concentrated in in certain uh, areas and schools. So I, I think that the building they're, they're in should honor uh, the students at the same time. So I, I think this is an uh, important one to keep in. All right, we've got two participants who've raised their hand. At least my hand. Can um, uh, Christina? Hi, everybody. Um, yes, I also agree with Jose that this is an important criteria that should be kept. Um, when we discussed it last time, I felt very empowered by the student who was on here and shared about. Um, how we need to take a specific look at these groups because they are our most vulnerable groups and we need to make sure that we do everything that we can to give them um, the best experience in our district. So I also believe that we definitely need to keep um, criteria B. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other discussion? I was trying to stop sharing. Can we talk about combining other ones before we talk about taking ones off? Um, and, and Alan, if we could try to, you know, get three or four before we vote, maybe that would help if we could consolidate them all, all into one. Okay, as long as we can keep track of um, which, which is what. Um, so, that's fine. It, so, did you have a uh, Don? I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a break, and <laughs> we'll we'll see what the. Did you have a um, a proposed change or a, com, a proposed combine? Um, well, yeah, I was wondering one if we could combine physical condition and age of the school because I feel like those are probably pretty create related. I mean. I don't know if there was a lot of discussion about that last year because it was they were both from last year, but I was that was a thought. Age of the school and condition? Physical condition, yeah. All right. So we're talking about B and JJ. Is there any discussion on this? Yeah, I'm sorry. One of the one of the five items I was going to bring up was we absolutely have to keep uh, age of school because yeah, that again the schools are not going to get any better as they get older. This isn't like wine uh, or me. I, I mean, these schools are going to fall apart. Uh, and but the condition of the schools it it's part and parcel because a lot of the older schools are just because they're falling apart. That's part of the condition of the schools. Uh, we don't have too many. Yeah, relatively new schools that are falling down, uh, or at least not as badly. So I mean, combining these makes a lot of sense. Okay. Any other discussion? Hi, this is Amparo. Um, I, I would agree to combining them also because the physical condition is kind of subjective. Um, you know, what, what would define the severity of a physical condition, right? So I think we're adding some sort of quantitation by adding the age of it, age of the school. Okay, and just so the committee is aware, the physical condition was an assessment that was done by um, an architectural and planning group. 
um, back in 2016, um, just so everybody knows what that was originally based on. But we definitely could, can change this to um, using the age of the school as the metric. Or can you use both metrics together, no? Well, then basically we have two criteria. <laughs> we can't include, combine them. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we need to come up with a single metric to define it. Otherwise, it's still two criteria. What was the metric that the original report? Do you have a definition for that metric? So the age of the school was the oldest permanent building on campus. The um, physical condition was a assessment done by an architect that was part of an architectural planning firm that did the original um, 2016 master plan. So they went around and did an evaluation of the school sites. Um, after looking across them and creating it, it's based on a hundred point scale, which is what um, is part of the historic documents that were posted on the website. Mm, okay. You know, if we're not speaking in abstracts anymore, if we're actually thinking about you know, the schools that are remaining on the list, the physical condition you know, the worst physical condition of our schools are the oldest schools. Uh, I mean, even though the youngest school that is left on that list is not nearly as bad a physical condition as the oldest school on that list. So perhaps that if you want to uh, j just to minimize the, the metrics here, just delete JJ, the age of schools, and just deal with physical condition. I think we're realistically understanding that the older schools uh, are the physical condition is worse. There is a pretty strong correlation between the two. Thanks. And, and I'm sorry, uh, it was Christine, right? Who made the original proposal? Is that correct? It was Danielle. Oh, I'm sorry, Danielle. Yeah. So what would you like your intent to be um, as far as the metric goes so that we can, everybody knows what they're voting on? Well, I mean, I don't think it has to mean, remain mine. A lot of people have weighed in. I mean, maybe, I don't, it, it seems like if the physical condition assessment has already been done, that it doesn't make sense to throw that out completely. Like that sounds pretty thorough. So maybe what Don's saying makes sense, just throw out age of school. <laughs> I mean, if you can't include it, I mean, it did, I don't seem like you could just add age of school to that list, but I'm surprised it wasn't already added, but I guess it's. Well, they were um, both um, criteria in the previous, in the previous round, so. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I mean, I would just say, if, I would just say if we're not going to, combine them let's just wait and consider throwing out age of school again because I feel like we should first think about ones we want to combine before throwing things out because maybe we'll I mean like my um because yeah I just feel like that's just starting to throw things out doesn't seems like better to start combining it's hard to see the whole list is it is that the whole list yeah I was just zooming in for the ones that we were discussing at that moment in time, but. Uh -huh. um, so are you withdrawing your proposal? Yes, for now, because I don't want to propose, yeah, if we're not going to combine them, I don't want to propose throwing something out. Okay. So do we have a, um, uh, well, I have a question, like back since like functionality that was from the old list, what what was the metric for functionality? Because I feel like everything else in that list counts as functionality. So I was going to propose just combine all that stuff under functionality, drop off and STEM program space and lack of access to green, like all those things are about the functionality. So why right, not just... So 
the original functionality score was again that same assessment that was done by the architectural planning firm. Um, so it was they graded each building um, and site in two different ways. One was educational functionality and one was condition. So the condition is basically like, does the roof leak? Are the windows sound? Is the flooring cracked or um, broken or the seams coming apart? So that's condition. Functionality basically is um, do you have the right space to do what you're supposed to do? So if it's a science room and it has carpet, even if the carpet's in good shape, it's probably not the right thing to have to support a science program, right? And so um, that's really what the functionality side looked at. And as far as the site goes, it did look at drop-off space. Um, it did look at whether there were STEM program space. Um, it did talk about um, the number of, of rest or at least sinks. Um, the size of the multi-purpose room was on there. Um, so there were quite a few of these items that were specifically part of the grading system. Okay, so that seems like, you know, they already are combined into functionality. So we should consider just cutting those ones off because they're already, and you're saying that that assessment was already done, mm -hmm. that function on. Yes, it yeah. was done in 2016. Yeah, so I mean, if there's a way I would propose, well, again, like if they're already there, I don't see why, yeah, I would propose saying that they are combined <laughs> with that. So whichever ones you say are, are in that already, I would say we, sh we should we should consider them combined. Okay. I want to agree. Um, if you go through the list of functionalities, if they're already listed um, on the list, maybe you want to consider that they're already part of the matrix. All right. So this one for sure was. Um, The, the number of sinks was, but not necessarily the number of restrooms. The green space wasn't really covered, but this one definitely was covered. And this one was covered as part of the functionality score. That's was, uh, was, so, sorry, was uh, technology included in that? lack of technology infrastructure or was that something separate? Uh, that was actually done by a different, um, that, that was done separately. That was scored by the um, IT department. So the IT department did a, a scoring for the technology infrastructure. Okay. I would point out that there's been many E-rate uh, projects that have went along that have been, uh, improving technology across the district. So, Just to round back so that we, we keep on this particular proposal. So what we're looking at is we're looking at taking K and since as part of that functionality score, E, E, O, and N were, were considerations within the functionality score. We're talking about combining those together and using the functionality score as the metric yes do that okay. i have a quick question was the unsafe playground and athletic facilities part of that functionality that was actually under um the condition side so this faci facility condition component would have included or did include um the unsafe playground and athletic facilities component okay okay so the, can we propose that we Combine that at the same time if we're doing a vote, a couple of votes. We can do that. So we are going to take H, combine H with B, physical B. condition. All right. So we'll make and Don's had his hand raised for a while. Oh, no. That, 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 she put me on hold on the, uh, my other eye. <laughs> well, okay. 
Just wanted to acknowledge you, that's all. I appreciate that. Somebody had picked better. Well, I was I was trying to let a few other people do their first round before we went through all of Don's, but don't worry, we will get back. I understand. Um, I actually have my hand raised as well. Okay. Um, but it's not, um, it's actually not to address this, these particular conditions, it's to go back to the percentage of enrollment. Um, I, can we also combine V and X? I think that they um, relate to demographics and are closely related um, and I think I don't want to speak for the student that spoke up the last meeting but I think there was a correlation between these two that were cited okay uh, we can we can do that as another proposal it'll be a counter proposal to the first one which is fine um, so we will and I think that's probably about good on this particular voting round so that because I'm running out of color coding <laughs> So um, let's, is there any discussion on that particular proposal? I'm sorry, I, I'm lost here. You know, it seems like we're going off in about three or four different tangents and I'm not sure what we're combining and I know we, we, we're not eliminating anything, but I'm not quite sure what we're doing. Okay. Because it seems like we're going, we're skipping around. We are okay. skipping around. Um, so, Maybe we'll, can, is it okay, Odessa, if we hold that one for the next voting and we'll vote on these three first? Yes, sorry, I was trying to be respectful and just raise my hand. No, no, it's great. <laughs> it got away and, from and me. I, I understand. Now, we're, we're kind of going off script here, so we're among friends, right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and I, and I promise I'll, I'll put that on the next one. So let me save this particular poll and we will, um, and hopefully Donna will be clear enough. Um, we'll go through each one of them just to make sure everybody knows what they're voting on. So let's, um, let's see if we can launch it. So item eight, launch poll. So the first one is the recommendation that we remove item V, which is percent of enrollment of ESL foster youth in low income from the list. Yes is to remove the criteria, no is to keep the criteria, and then we have abstain. The second one is to combine E, E, N, and O, which is E, E is the size of the multipurpose room, O is the lack of STEM program space, N is poor drop off and pick up, and we put that in with functionality using the functionality score as the, um, as the metric. Number three is H and B. So um, we are gonna use the physical condition which included unsafe playgrounds and athletic fields um as part of the scoring so basically we're putting h under b so those are the three items that we have did that clarify it enough yeah but except for i thought we were holding off on the number one so that we could discuss it with the counter proposal well we let's just take the one that's on the table and then if you don't vote for it to leave we will talk about the counter proposal Okay. So we're, first we have to decide to keep it. So if you would like to keep it and then talk about it with the counter proposal, we can do that. So you should vote for to keep it. If it gets removed now, we don't need to worry about a counter proposal because it's been removed. Any other clarifications? Feel free to speak up if you if anybody else is confused. Okay, we have 11 votes in. We're up to 13. All right, 
There's our 14. So we will end polling and share the results. All right, so we're going to keep the enrollment. We're going to keep number V or letter V. So that's going to stay on the table so we can discuss that counter proposal. The, um, we are going to combine H with, um, with B. And H, and then we will also combine K and um, we will combine and E E N and O together. All right, so we're making good progress here, guys. This is great. So now we can go back, I believe, to that counter proposal and talk that over a bit more. So just to recall everybody's um, memory on this, the proposal on the table is that we combine um, V and X um, together. I'm not sure. And maybe you want to clarify, Odessa, um, if you're looking to at what way we would measure this. I think, uh, as I see it, these are demographic related um, criteria. Um, and I think it gives a, gives a broader sort of breadth to the condition. Um, and not, you know, it's not singularly faceted right now, but it gives it a little, makes it a little bit broader. Um, and if my understanding of the point that was um, brought up during our last committee meeting is that, uh, that these um, groups represent uh, underrepresented um, populations that may have not received the attention um, during previous, uh, previous uh, constructs of facility planning and, and um, allocation of funds. And so uh, we don't want to make the the mistake of of repeating that this time. Okay. Do we have a discussion, an, an additional discussion on this particular proposal, Don? Yeah, I I, I look at the schools that we've rebuilt over the, the past twenty years, and the demographics of the students there. Uh, and I, I'm looking at, at, at Dover, at Nystrom, at Coronado, at Perry's, uh, at, at Ford. And those were awfully poor areas. Uh, and the demographics were the black and brown on there. I take a look at the brand new Korematsu and the brand new uh, El Cerrito High School, or nearly new El, El Cerrito High School. And the demographics on there may not have been so, so poor, but definitely black and brown on there. So I, I, I have to disagree with this idea that uh, that schools in low income areas and, school, uh, and schools uh, that had mostly black and brown students have been ignored. I, I just don't believe that that is an accurate statement on there. There's a lot more that can be done, that's for sure. But uh, it's not that they've been ignored. It's not like everything up in Kensington has been replaced uh, uh, or, or Pinole. It's just not accurate. But I, I also I also think that if you look at the pathways, um, once students get through uh, a newer school like a like a Ford, going to Helms, and then they have they have a choice to go to Richmond or or to the ends or to Pinal. How are they choosing, and how's that affecting the general population of of the community? I would agree with that. If you do have a percentage that are transferring from their home attendance area to other schools. And I, I have a, but you also have to con, take into context that some of these criteria also account for the class sizes and the accommodations have to be much lower in some of these class sizes than in other classrooms. 
So that has to be taken into consideration, especially with the ESL students and your special ed students. So, and some of those have to be taken, I mean, that has to be taken into consideration also. We can't teach out of a closet anymore, Kim. <laughs> well, you've been doing a fine job, but I do believe the critters that are in there with you are having an issue at this point in your life. Like the one you're in at the moment. I, nice. Um, would it be a, an unduplicated count, the percentages? That's what we used previous for V. Um, so V was a criteria last time. And so it was used, um, it, it is a, um, we did use the unduplicated count as the count for V. So could you explain what you mean by unduplicated count, please? And duplicate account is the same count that's used for the LCAP funding local control accountability plan. Um, and so it, what it does is um, a lot of times there are students who are English language learners, foster youth and low income or some combination uh, two of those. And so the unduplicated count just means that we're only counting that student once. Thank you. So, um, it doesn't mean, so we don't count if you're foster youth and low income, that student doesn't get counted twice. Any other uh, discussion items for this one? No. So do we have any other proposals we'd like to put on this list before we vote or? I think I think Don, you still had another another one that you were proposing. Did you have another combined one Not versus combined. eliminate? Not a combined. Not a combined. Do we have any other combined ones before we wrap up the combining? Would it po be possible to combine P and Q? Like they're both talking about temporary facilities, the number of portables, as well as the schools like located in temporary facilities. Or is that um, meaning the whole entire building is, or I don't know. I'm not so, really sure what the diff, what temporary facilities is referring to. If it means portables, then it seems like they should be uh, combined. So we have, um, we have two different instances of this, or three actually, now that I'm thinking of it and Lewis might have another one that I'm not thinking of, um, where we do have two campuses that have portable temporary facilities um, that, we're, that were designated to be rebuilt and are truly what we would consider temporary because they are living there. Um, we have two campuses that are about to be moved into temporary facilities using the critical needs projects um, before they're in line while they're in line for the rebuild and then we have one campus who's in a temporary facility that is a permanent building um, because the program doesn't have a permanent home um, so for the most part it it does correlate um, However, we do have one now on this particular one, what we can do though is to count temporary facilities and portables together. So it would be a metric that is able to be actually physically combined um, versus others which were not really combinable as much as you'd have to pick one metric or another. So would the number of portables on campus be part of the capacity calculation? The not necessarily. Um, it depends on it, previous, when we did over and nearing capacity, we did not count portables. However, we did not designate whether pat portables were part of the capacity on the site or not for this combined LNS. So that's a level of detail we haven't gotten to yet. Don? Let's keep in mind that a school like Hercules Middle High School, we've got state funding uh, that largely built that school. And there was a requirement 
that they use portables as permanent buildings. So there, I mean, we can look at them and say they're portables and they're temporary, but it was a requirement by the state if we wanted to accept their money that they be accepted as, as permanent. So I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a gray area there. We, I mean, they would look at them and say, that's portable, they're temporary. Well, well in, in those, there's actually two different versions of um, what we would consider modular buildings on that campus. So the, like you were saying, the, the um, state did require for some time that 30% of the classroom space is on a campus if you were qualifying for state funding be portables. Um, however, most of the time, um, especially later in that program's history, um, school districts began using modular buildings that actually had a more permanent foundation um, as the, the portable um, <laughs> classrooms and they uh, treated the exterior different with, with stucco and, and different things that made them a little bit more permanent than less permanent. However, Hercules Middle High also has what we traditionally think of portables as well. So they have like three versions <laughs> of, of campus um, construction. Um, so that is true. Um, and Porticles in general were thought of as a temporary solution district-wide. However, um, they are the most permanent temporary solution in every district across the state. I think they are distinctly different the way they're defined here, though. So right now, I... I don't know if that was a formal proposal that was brought forward, but I'm not sure what to type. Um, so I need more clarification. Well, are, are we trying to combine um, those two together? I would say yes, if they can be, if you, like you said, it could be saying the number of portables and temporary facilities. Okay. I mean, it's a little ambiguous to say, like if, the number like maybe there's a bunch of little portables in one space and there's one giant facility somewhere else um but still i just as a metric it seems like i feel like it'd be worth combining them rather than trying to get rid of one of them or try to do both of them it seems like redundant to do both of them when we only have 15 criteria so i would propose combining them so how would, would you calculate that? I mean, would it just be the total number of buildings? I mean, if 100% of a, a school is in a temporary facility, is that, is that would be the number or? So all, the, all of these um, criteria have a point range. We have to transfer whatever the metric is to a point range of one to 10 or zero to 10, really. Um, and so in the previous time that we did this, there was an ability to be able to transfer things on a range. So it's not like a yes or no answer per se. It actually can be a point difference. So on this particular one, what I would recommend is that we would use a percentage and depending on what percentage you have relates to what um, number of points towards prioritization you would get. But that'd be the percentage of classrooms that are permanent versus in portables is how you would look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Number of classrooms. So what, uh, how do you differentiate between a, a permanent portable and a temporary portable? I mean, aside from you, what you said, throwing stucco, stucco on it, maybe a better foundation. <laughs> By, de by definition with DSA it would be the permanent foundation would be one of the requirements. So wood foundations are most typical on our portables, but as Ellen explained, uh, locations like Hercules, um, and there are other locations where they're actually put on a stem wall footing, which is much more permanent um, type of foundation for those buildings. That's how uh, the state architect's office would look at that. I'm just going to use a school, one school as an example. Uh, I'm not advocating for or against it, but at Valley View, that's pretty much portables. But I kind of got the feeling that those were going to be there for quite a number of years, and they're not on a, a serious foundation. 
uh, we would, would they be classified here as uh, you know, temporary campuses? It is a temporary campus. It was an interim campus. It is also traditional portables. So it would count on both regards. I kind of feel that uh, temporary facilities, uh, the whole site is not set up like if you, you're adding portables to your campus, you're going to put them where you want, but a temporary facility is just sort of, it's not intended for long term in terms of the design of, and the functionality of everything. Water flowing, like water puddles and everything. <laughs> I have to, um, I have to say that I would err on the side of keeping these distinct and apart. It sounds like there are um, reasons why uh, a temporary campus is distinguished as a temporary campus versus um, portables may be uh, constructed on a campus for a variety of reasons, either related to um, capacity issues or because a new school is being built. Um, so I, I think that I see them as different and not necessarily relatable in the way of being combined. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I worry about the, the phrase, uh, you know, temporary campus, uh, being a, used with a very broad brush. I get, once again, uh, bringing up Valley View as a temporary campus as, a, as compared to the Mandarin School. As a temporary campus, I mean they're they're not they should not be looked at through the same lens. I think the Mandarin temporary campus. I think every student and parent here hopes that really is temporary and that they move out of there tomorrow. Whereas uh, you know Valley View type of a campus, they understand it's going to be there for a while. Uh, I'm sorry, and I, I just I have trouble using that. I'm not sure everybody has that same impression. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no arguments. Uh, anyway, I just have trouble using the, the, the phrase temporary campus uh, as broadly as we are doing here. But you're right. Some portables are used to balance capacity, right? Schools that need more capacity add portables to get capacity. And there are some ca campuses that are built that are just portables is built as a campus. Um, but there are several around that ha have that distinguishing look. Um, so. And then you're right about the definition of temporary. Is there really a definition of temporary? Who defines that? Both are, are problematic. Um, all right, do we have any other combining before we vote on these? Hearing none, I think we'll launch this this, and then we'll move on to the next um, round of potential, oops, wrong button, potential uh, removal of items. All right, so we're gonna launch these two. So the first one, just in case people didn't remember, was the, the ones highlighted in blue, um, combining those two together. The second one is this combination of number of portables and temporary facilities. Right, we have 10 in.
So we can always uh, apply a, a weight is the next part of this conversation, right? Um, yes, we can. We have 12 in. There's only 13 now, Ellen, because one dropped out. Oh, fair enough. All right, we're at 13. So by the uh, skin of our teeth here, we have, for the first one, nine said combine. So we'll go ahead and do that. Can you show up the results? Oh, I thought I was, but never mind. How about that? OK, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. Um, so we are going to, um, we are going to combine X and V and, um, the second one also came through as combining. Oh, that was not what I meant to have up there. All right. So from here, everybody think about what the next plan is for your next proposal. I know um, Dawn has a couple of them ready. Does anybody else have a combined one before we move on to straight up removal? What's the number now that we can? Are we okay. down to 18? Tim, can you help me here? Give me a count. Yeah, we lost... Um, three down below, the four down below, no, three. Okay, four, so I think we're at uh, 19, all right. I have an idea. Okay, is but I've, I've had a few ideas, so if someone else wants to go. <laughs> well, is it a removal or is it a um, combined? I think we're at 16. We're at 16? Good with what you're doing right there. Well, then that's almost 15. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't have to stop at 15. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so we can, 16 was our, or 15 was our, definitely our goal. Um, so if it's another combine, let's go ahead and address that and then we'll um, get to Dawn's removals. And anybody else's removals if there's more people who have a removal. Well, I was just thinking this, you know, this one that's called Smaller Schools 21st Century Concerns. Yeah, I, was, I would love a better definition of what that is, by the way. Right. I mean, well, what I was thinking, I don't, is that just to take off the smaller schools part, because that to me is is like more about what you're planning to build. I don't know. It's like more what you're going forward. But um, so if it, but if we're talking about 21st century concerns, that I was thinking, well, some of the things that we talked about last time that would fit in that perhaps would be like lack of air conditioning, lack of windows, um, and lack of access to green space on campus. Like these were all things related to thinking about potential fires or COVID, you know, having to like be in, have classes outside or to have classes inside, you know, like just sort of dealing with the, the potential issues that we're, um, we've been dealing with the last couple of years. So those three things I thought could be points on that, but I, you know, I don't know if that would, would uh, you know, exactly how measurable that is, but. We are in shame. Okay. And just taking off smaller schools altogether, just, just calling right. it 21st century concerns. So in general, I was looking for a definition of what 21st century concerns was going to be um, anyways, because we really did need to define how we were going to measure that. So um, 
what what is people's reaction to this smaller schools to me um is definitely an issue something that has it keeps coming up on a consistent basis in every form that we keep looking at i'm sorry i, I understand which direction you're going in that it's coming up saying we we want to build a lot of smaller schools or that we want to uh, ignore the fact that they, some of these schools are smaller. And I'm not sure what I understand what, what's coming up in these forums. We have quite a few smaller schools out there. We need to pay and that's where the charters are. When we have the, we are rebuilding them. It seems that the charters or not rebuilding them, the charters are coming in, and then we have to build accommodations for them. Well, correct me um, if I'm, I'm wrong, but I thought that when this was placed on there, that the people wanted us to build smaller schools. Instead of building one elementary school for 500 students, build two elementary schools for 250. That would be my idea too, but that's, I wasn't aware of that, so that would be my interest. That's what I think. Ellen is trying to get a clarification on what this the definition of this is and if you're saying that Dawn then that's probably what she's trying to get clarified and, and I don't know what 21st century concerns really means either uh, I mean what I, I think they might be may be different than what you think they may be it doesn't really clarify things here I don't think we're gonna have the larger schools in some of the areas I think we're gonna have smaller schools to take on the students in those capacities to make sure that they have some of those areas like Verde and Lake have smaller families in that area. So we may not have to need a school that, as you said, 500. We only need a school of 300. But are they going to build another life of um, housing development down there and then we'll, ha we'll have to build another small school? Okay, one thing to keep in mind is that we we have to use this as a criteria to be able to judge whether so whether it's good smaller schools are good or bad, it would have to be criteria of saying um, you know smaller school scores higher than a, a a larger school. If we're just talking about what we want to rebuild, um, that's that's another conversation. So we've got to make sure that we're staying um, within what we can do with the um, criteria. I see Karen, you've got your hand up. Maybe. Yes, that, um, that was my addition to this, the smaller schools and 21st century concerns. And I think what I'm real, you know, what I really meant was like, um, environmental concerns, sociological concerns, like smaller schools in the sense that smaller pods, smaller groups of, of children in one place and the potentiality of dividing a school and even though a, of a campus being divided so that it has um, pods that are smaller epidemiological concerns um, and environmental, um, all of those kinds of things that we're looking at for the first time ever, really, right now in COVID. So, so I think that the smaller school conversation can come up when a, when a school is built to see if that's a possibility, but uh, not as one of our criteria for, for uh, looking at, at rebuilding a school. In the 21st century, um, I, I can't see. Concerns. Concerns. Um, I think that is, this also something that needs to be talked about when the school is being designed with the architects um, rather than, than 
even though some of the concerns are, are around green spaces or around confined spaces or around uh, air circulation. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think we need to refine some of these things. Uh, actually, I would like to hear from, from Lewis and the design part of this and from... Um, so, so Jose, to your point, I do think there probably should be some clarification around lack of air conditioning, but it may be better tied lack of air conditioning in uh, improper vent or lack of air changes or indoor air quality is probably a better uh, metric to define um, lack of windows, lack of air quality um, versus lack of air conditioning. So I want to propose to to remove uh this line item but then not forget as we define the other items that are related especially to 21st century conditions uh, i think that uh, i agree that i don't think pandemic is going to be a norm but i think that uh fires and and the, the temperature is going to be a big change so my proposal is to remove this one line item but to keep in mind as we Define some of the other ones, it ties right in. Okay, so we had a combine on the table for the ones highlighted in blue. Um, that would be a secondary um, proposal, unless um, Danielle, you would like to take uh, Jose up on, on his um, suggestion. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I was just trying to yeah, figure out if we could get a few things under one category, but seems kind of yeah, broad and undefinable. <laughs> okay. Um since we've hit the removal and I know I've put you off for a long time, Don, <laughs> would you like to um propose one of your removals? Well, Many of the ones that I wanted to remove are no longer relevant because you've combined them into things, which tells me people want to keep them. So uh, there's no discussion on those, but the issue on the lack of windows, I'm not arguing about the lack of windows, but how does it apply to the 19 schools that we're dealing with there? As I think we had this discussion before where we've really only got two schools that have a, a serious lack of windows, Kennedy High School and Richmond High School. And we've already authorized money to tear down the front building at Kennedy High School where there are no windows. And so we're, we're really we're talking about one school. So do we do we have a, a criteria that only applies to, to one school? That's my concern. So I, my recommendation was to remove it. it. It needs to be addressed, but not as a, a criteria for for how the funding is uh, as allocated. What about um, uh, Lewis's, um, and, and maybe this, like, this is a discussion for the larger committee, um, and we kind of have circled around this question a couple times about windows and why, why are we designating windows and is, wh what do windows represent? Like, are we talking about natural light? Are we talking about views or are we talking about ventilation? Um, because all three of those things do apply to multiple schools, depending on which one of them you're talking about. Because while we have windows at some school sites, they don't actually have views out. They are only higher windows. Or um, some schools have a window, but again, because we're in a, this idea that there's a range, not just a yes or a no, um, you know, the amount of windows per the amount of square footage is, um, uh, significantly different in different applications. Um, if we're talking about ventilation though, even though we have operable windows at, at a lot of our um, older sites, some of them operate, some of them don't. Um, sometimes the HVAC units do allow for ventilation, sometimes they don't. Um, so there's, there's these different components of windows and I think maybe the best approach to try to really define what's going on here is really think about what are we trying to judge it for um, versus like the end product of the window itself. Um, 
and maybe that'll help add clarity to this. If yeah. I could offer that um, maybe it's what we're looking at is health and health and safety. Um, the, the natural light offering um, both a social, emotion, or a, a mental um, health support as well as uh, the ventilation that we need. Um, also, the, if we even look at the, the green space, that is covered by health and safety, the access to the outdoors to be able to um, hold classes, uh, particularly during times like these where um, we don't want students on top of each other and not in well ventilated spaces. So are you suggesting we... Um, uh, I'm suggesting maybe <laughs> a, 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 a different category that's not here, but maybe encompasses all of these um, subcategories that are here. Okay. Although, does that feed back into what um, Ellen had said about multiple metrics under one title? Yeah, and I was trying to figure out, I was thinking, sorry for the lack of response, <laughs> of how I could formulate that into a metric, uh, um, but not have, I, d I have not come up with one. Um, but, you know, um, something that was kind of referred to is if we really are talking about ventilation and air changes, you know, the air conditioning and the windows kind of feed into both of those. And then maybe there's a separate criteria that talks about the um, daylighting um, and there was something the green else. space. The green space. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, the daylighting that... and the green space. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Would that work for you? I, I think um, Adessa Wright was the one that suggests that. Does that work? Yeah, I'm I'm open. I'm just kind of putting things out there. Right. I just don't want to misrepresent you. That's all. Um, yeah. No, I think that's a good proposal. Okay. So. So Ellen, you're going to have time for one vote, and that's it. Oh shoot! I wasn't watching the time. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, let me quickly put this in. So instead, so we would be looking at um, adjust uh, windows, which is E windows and AC, which is which lack of air conditioning is R and to ventilation and we'll do that as one and then we'll do one as you know when we're in person i have physical cards that i just move around <laughs> And that really helps <laughs> um, combine. And then we vote with our hands, which also really helps. Green space and uh, view windows. I think that's partly um, access to the outdoor learning environment, right? Or you're making it more complicated, Lewis. <laughs> um, green space, outdoor learning. Okay, and view windows. All right, so we've got a couple different proposals on the table here, so we are going to go for it and hopefully um, you guys can work through this. Uh, let's and Ellen, before you go there, so the, read those two back, how they're, how they're gonna be phrased. So that's on the polling. So I'll read through them okay. in the polling. Okay. 
Um, so we'll launch the poll. So the first one is just straight up remove the smaller schools first 21st century concerns, but that's Jose's comment of keeping that in mind when we're looking at other items. Um, we have the suggestion by Don that we remove the um, site lack of windows. Then we have this other component what we talked about where we adjust the windows and lack of air conditioning um, criteria to include all uh, to include the level of ventilation on each campus and then the fourth one is combine the criteria of access to green space and view windows to um, incorporate green space outdoor learning and the view height windows So if anybody needs clarification before they vote, please let me know. I know we kind of rushed into that. You have a question from Karen. Oh, sorry. Yes. Karen? I think she's had her hand up for a while. I don't know. Oh. sure if she ever put it down. So would the proposal be to bring these back in a reworded um, format for consideration well we were hoping um i mean we'll we'll get down to the 15 here we really wanted to take this group back out to the community to get more input from the community um now that we've kind of got a consolidated list um and so that we can also get opinion from the community about waiting and then we were hoping in the new year, I know we, we promised originally that this committee was only gonna last through December, but we were really hoping you'll give us a little grace and um, choose to come back in the new year and to finalize um, the waiting and, the, um, and some of this um, uh, wording so that we can, um, make a final consolidated recommendation to the board. So right now we have 10 people voting. I don't know, Tim, did we lose additional people? Is 10? We have 13 votes. Okay. Okay, we've got 13 in, so we will share the results. Uh, we ended up with, yes, that we remove the smaller school sites. We ended up with a split of yes and no on the uh, windows. We have yes to adjusting the windows and air conditioning to ventilation and yes to combining the green, green space outdoor learning and view windows together. Um, I know we're out of time, but I'm just wondering since we've addressed window, the window condition in both three and four, if um, do we really still want it as a, is a separate one as well? Is that what this is telling me? No, I don't think so. I think that the whole point was when you adjust it, if that one wins, that means they're combined. Number three, they're combined. Okay. Windows is combined with air conditioning to, to talk about ventilation. Does anybody have an objection to that? And it's also combined with green space to, and view right. windows. So it's it's combined twice, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it can be. <laughs> it can be. It's not, it, it's not its own category any longer. Right. Is, is that everybody else's understanding? Do I have any objections? As, as long as we are clear that we once we start putting weight to this, act, that everyone understands that we have a chance to put weight on uh, on these things as the next part of of this conversation. Correct. Mm. That is the next part of this conversation. Yeah, and it'll just have to be reworded a little bit so it makes more logical sense about what it is we're actually talking about. So Ellen, would it help to, before we go out 
and do this, would it help to bring the list back in a email to everybody, have them look at it, and if there's any objection, set a timeline, you know, get your comments in by such and such, and then, and then uh, move on with it? Yeah, it's probably a good, a good proposal, and we'll, we'll regroup in the new year um, and um, see if we can set additional, additional dates and then look also into the public calendar. Um, I'm sorry, we went a little long tonight. Is that uh, a public comment? comment? Yes, that's what I was just going to. Um, as if, since we, we didn't quite make it to public comment, can we, um, can we go ahead and do that? Is, is there, and I have James saying that he does have a public comment, um, so let's ask him to uh, James, are you? Yes, I am ready. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, and, and please, uh, as defined, is keep your comments to approximately two minutes. Yes, yeah, 6.36. Yeah, so two weeks ago, I mentioned that the students from El Cerrito only less than half of West County population. Actually, I have a, a more exact number now, actually only one third. So two thirds of the community do not live in El Cerrito. And then I have a further comment on this discussion tonight regarding the need of El Cerrito in the future because there are uh, public housing uh, being constructed right now. Uh, let's think about the site that West County will use that actually was built for the El Cerrito community. But I don't know what happened. The community didn't use it because that's why this, this, this site was used by uh, Michelle Obama School temporarily and now uh, this county will use temporarily. So if the El Cerrito community need a uh, uh, school site, then let's use the site that the community already got it. The district already built it, but the community didn't use it. So what's going on? So that's my comment. So it's only one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not totally sure how that necessarily applies to our um, prioritization committee. Um, how, so you, you might want to also choose another forum for, for that comment as well. Um, oh, okay. However, I, I would... If, if I will give a comment on the criteria, then maybe if the community will, the community will consider health and safety because because I believe that's why the El Cerrito community abandoned the Portola site because they are concerned about health and safety of their children because it's very close to the PGNE substation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for your involvement again tonight. Um, we really do appreciate your time and, and effort and thought into this process. And um, well, we were hoping we were going to get wrapped up um, with everything this evening. Uh, it does look like we will be coming back, so we will be in touch um, after the holiday break. So everybody, please have a safe um, holiday break and, um, you know, remember you wear your mask. Um, and let's see, uh, see our families over Zoom and um, everybody come back safe to us in the new year. You. Thank, thank you very much thank you happy holidays everyone happy holidays, happy holidays. thank yeah. you okay.